Good afternoon, EDH enthusiasts. I'm the Planeswalker Project, and welcome to a Commander Deck Tech. About a year ago, I covered one of my favorite competitive Commander decks, a mono-black deck led by Kirik, son of Yogmoth. I could safely say this became one of my most popular videos, but many people have asked since if I could ever revisit the deck, but with a less competitive approach. And so here we are. Let's start off by taking a look at our Commander. Kirik is 4 generic and then 3 Phyrexian black mana for a 2-2 Phyrexian horror minion with lifelink. He has 2 abilities. For each black pip in a mana cost, you can pay 2 life rather than pay that mana. Whenever you cast a black spell, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Kirik. Kirik is a very unique commander, especially in mono black. He utilizes extensively what's called Phyrexian mana, a special kind of mana that gives you the alternate cost of paying 2 life. You can choose to pay with traditional black mana, or you can simply pay 2 life and not need to pay the mana. In theory, Kirik could only cost 4 generic mana if you pay 6 life. The way this deck works is rather simple. Kirik lets you pay for all black pips in all costs by paying 2 life. And so this is our main game plan. Kirik offers us ramp in a form that even green decks might struggle to keep up with. And so we want to utilize that in the most extreme form. Our main goal for this deck is to access a specific combo that utilizes the Grey Merchant of Asphodel to leech life off of each opponent equal to our devotion to black mana. Since this is an enter ability, we can tap into some combo loops to repeatedly sacrifice the merchant and then have it re-enter. A very simple way to do this is to use a card called Saw in Half. This 3 minute instant destroys the Grey Merchant, but it then gives us two tokens that are copies of the Grey Merchant, but the power and toughness of those tokens is half of what the original was. That part of the ability is irrelevant, as the enter ability remains at full power, giving us two leech effects. Another route to this goal is using a combo engine centered around the second most important card in this deck, Necrotic Ooze. Necrotic Ooze is a 4 drop 4 3 that has the activated abilities of all creature cards in all graveyards. If we have certain cards in the graveyard, we can actually tap into some intense synergy. Let's say that we have Chainer, Dementia Master, and the Demir House Guard in the graveyard, and have Kirik in play. We can use Kirik's ability to pay 6 life, to pay for Chainer's ability, or at least the mana part of it, reanimating the Grey Merchant. We drain each opponent, and then add that life that they lost to our own. Next, we sacrifice the Grey Merchant to use the Demir House Guard's activated ability, giving a regeneration to the Necrotic Ooze since we're using the ability through our Oozy friend. Then, we pay 6 life and reanimate the Grey Merchant again, and then we repeat this process until our opponents are defeated. An interesting aspect of the House Guard specifically is that it has the ability Transmute, where you can pay 3 mana and discard the House Guard to tutor for a 4 drop card and add it to your hand. Necrotic Ooze just so happens to be a 4-drop, meaning we have a direct line to help set this combo up. Another tutor for the Ooze is Flesh Rither, who has Transfigure, which is pretty similar. Transfigure lets us pay 3 and sacrifice the Flesh Rither to tutor for a 4-drop creature to put directly into play. This works along the same line, but it saves us a step by dropping Necrotic Ooze directly into the battlefield. The bulk of this deck is also dedicated to tutor slots to help us get to our combo pieces. Kirik can handle the black pips of most of our mana costs, and so by getting him into play early, we can then start storming off in a sense with our tutors. Tutors like Beseech the Queen, Beseech the Mirror, Dark Petition, Diabolic Tutor, Grim Tutor, Mastermind's Acquisition all work uniquely in this deck by being cheap to cast tutor spells. Let's look at the Diabolic Tutor, for example, a 4 drop spell that normally would cost 2 and 2 black. But while Kirik is in play, this will only cost us 2 generic mana, making this an excellent option for this deck. I chose not to run Demonic Tutor in this deck simply because of its money dollar cost, though it is another optimal tutor that could in theory cost only 1 mana. We also run several Entomb style effects to help set up our graveyard. Obviously Entomb is in here, letting us pitch any card we need to the bin. Buried Alive and Final Parting both help put cards into the graveyard, and are great to help set us up. See, we can also tap into one more card draw engine utilizing the Necrotic Ooze, as Modius the Archfiend and the Scourge Familiar. Having both of these in your graveyard can give you total access to turbo out your endgame. The way it works is simple. Scourge Familiar lets you pitch cards from your hand to add black mana, which you can then use with the Necrotic Ooze. As Modius has an activated ability, where you pay 3 black mana to draw 7 cards. Because Necrotic Ooze only looks at the activated ability, we can't to ignore that binding contract part of his text box. You can also theoretically substitute the mana with paying 2 life for each black pip, utilizing Kirk, but I feel like we only would need to do this once. 
after we get one trigger of this off, we can then use some of those seven cards we've drawn to refuel our mana. This deck's largest brick is generic mana costs. Alone, Kirik can't deal with the generic costs of mana, and frequently, they're the most you'll have to pay for your spells. But with a card like Blood Celebrant, you can then channel your life total into paying for his activated ability to add one mana of any color. The mana produced by the Blood Celebrant is subject to no restrictions, and so you can pay generic costs with it. We also have cards like Bantu's Monument, the Helm of Awakening, Jet Medallion, and my personal favorite, Heartless Summoning, to help make our spells a generic mana cost cheaper to cast. Now, because our deck will cost us a tremendous amount of our life total, Villas Broker of Blood is excellent to lean into for additional card draw. See, Villas has an ability that'll convert any life loss into card draw for us, meaning every time you use your life total to pay for a black pip, you'll draw two cards. A great combo that you can pull off as early as turn one is to cast a Dark Ritual, use one mana to cast Entomb, which will target Villas putting into the bin, and then you cast Reanimate to bring back Villas. Reanimate will make us lose 8 life, since Villas is an 8 mana creature, but Villas will see that life loss and then draws 8 more cards and then we can continue to progress our game state. We also have an alternate win condition or two in this deck in the event that we get shut off of our traditional Grey Merchant loops. The most easily accomplished one is utilizing Professor Onyx and Chain of Smog. If you watched my Oathbreaker deck tech on Professor Onyx, this is a very powerful combo. You need Professor Onyx in play, and then when you cast the Chain of Smog, you'll target yourself. You'll discard two cards, but then you get to copy it and then target yourself again with the copy, and then repeat this process indefinitely. You can still target yourself even if you have zero cards in your hand, but the real goal here is to have Professor Onyx see that spell being copied over and over again. Each time that she does, each opponent will lose two life, and then you'll gain two life. And unless they can interrupt this combo, you'll win the game. We also have the Aetherflux Reservoir, which can easily pad our life total as we place spell into a spell each turn, and once we've hit at least 151 life, we can simply pay 50 life three times to blast our opponents off the game. The game plan is nearly identical to the other version of Kyrick. You'll want to cast Kyrick as early as you possibly can, and so getting your mana ramp online is critical. Once Kyrick is out, your land drops become less important, and so you can then begin beelining it for your endgame combo pieces. Kira can handle your colored mana pips, and so focus on your assembling your combo. If you lose access to any part of your combo, it's easy to pivot to focus on one of these secondary strategies. We do go slower than what the CEDH variant of this deck does, largely due to us using much less of the zero drop mana rocks and the expensive lands. But the deck still functions about the same, and it only costs about one seventh in terms of money dollars. If you're interested in the full decklist, the link to the Moxfield decklist will be in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, likes and shares are among the best ways to help the channel out. If you're new here, subscribe so you never miss a video. And as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you all next video.